So we just got a pretty huge update for the user interface and it's the fact that you can now drag UI elements without the need of scripting. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's get into the video. So firstly, I'm just going to overview the dev forum post and then move into the examples. But basically, there is the information about the UI drag detectors, which is new instance type designed to make interaction with UI elements easy. And they are basically just similar to drag detectors, except they work on user interface instead of 3D objects. And they can be used to instantly inject to the dragging behavior under both screen GUI and surface GUI. And this feature is currently in beta and it's only available in studio. And Roblox will be enabling on the client in a couple of weeks. So let's see the first use case of the UI drag detectors beta from the video on the dev forum post. So right here you have a slider that you would see in option settings. And right here it's making the background of the UI element more or less transparent. Then we have an example of the resizable window. And on this one, because this is either a UI grid layout or a UI list layout that's being used in this window. And you're also able to see the elements adjusting their position based on the size of the window that's being changed. And then there is basically this checkered example where the user is dragging a purple ball across the grid. And then we have an example of the UI drag detectors being used in surface GUIs to interact with 3D objects. And for instance, this lever on the right this is also something that you can do with normal drag detectors. But this panel on the left that's interacting with this like space probe thing or whatever, this seems really cool. And then here is an instruction on how to use the UI drag detectors. Where if you see to enable the beta feature, and then you just add a UI drag detector instance under any GUI object. For example, a frame. And this is the customization of UI drag detectors, which is pretty similar to default drag detectors also. Except you have few additional stuff, like this bounding UI, which is for designating another GUI based to the object or a GUI object instance to define the boundary of the drag. And you also have different events and methods that can be used to customize UI drag detector behavior. And I here they are providing examples of just adding a basic UI drag detector. but I'm going to go more into detail on the example place. And there is also the drag style. So as you've seen, the person was able to only drag the UI on one of the axes or even rotate it. But before I go into this test world, I need to point out the known issues where there are some bounding problems when the UI drag detectors is set to a rotated drag style with a reference UI instance. Then some issues with the rotation values. And something that's probably the most important is that some GUI object events, such as the most entered, won't fire properly doing a UI drag detection drag, as well as the hover cursor might not change when the draggable objects are overlapping. And they're also planning to add support to billboard GUIs, as well as have a defined behavior for dragging GUI objects influenced by UI list layouts. So that's for the dev forum post and I'm not going to bore you guys anymore. Let's actually just see the test word that you can go to by clicking on either this link, by clicking on the here, or even clicking on the testing example. All of these links are going to take you to the same place, which is going to be the UI drag detectors testing word. But after going here, what you want to do is press on these three dots in the corner and then either download the file or press on edit in studio. And here is the testing world boot. I'm not really able to do anything here and that's because we need to enable the beta feature by going into file then beta features and then just scrolling down to the UI drag detector right here. So we just want to enable this one then press on save and this is going to prompt us to restart Roblox Studio. So you just want to do that. And if you are not sure if this is working right now, you should have the hover icon, like I do right here on this red element, which is going to indicate that this should work properly. So right now let's just do a playtest and see what this is about. So I am able to just drag these boxes right now, and I can even move them out of the screen. And then all of these boxes are also going to change the hover icon, which is making it a little bit hard to navigate, but we basically just have different examples. So this is a hover icon boot. If I hold it to move it, I am able to move this box on my screen with the icon changing. And I can also rotate this box as well. Then there is the menu on the right side, where you have the properties and parents example, where you can press on the default box. 
but I just remove these other UI elements really quickly. And from the default menu, we basically just have different drag styles. We have the free move, the translate lane, as well as the rotate. And then we can add a bounding GUI, which makes it so we can move the element out of the box. And it basically was the same with all of them. We can even see that the rotation is stopping a bit, and that's because this element doesn't have the right space to move. And we can even rotate the bounding box. And now if this element is out of the bounding box, we are basically not able to move it. So this is pretty neat. And then there is the reference UI that we are able to rotate. And this is not going to do anything with the translate plane, but if I try to move the translate line, it's going to move relating to the reference UI element. As well as the rotation of this element is going to be relative to the reference UI. So I'm not going to go over everything in this video, I'm going to leave most of this stuff for you guys to check out, but I'm just going to be going over some of them. Like for example the UI padding. That's going to have a padding to the bounding box. And here you can see that it's also related to the scale of the user interface. As well as there is going to be the slider example from right here. And it's even going to work with values. And now let's see the UI interaction with 3D elements. So here we are able to drag the yellow joints to rotate the construction. So I'm going to try to drag this one. And I'm going to say that this is pretty neat. I can basically just see people making like puzzles or mini games with this. And then there is an element that says slide me. So let's see what this one does. And this one is increasing the intensity of the particle emitter. And then here is the previous example from the dev forum, where you can lower or raise the bridge. And to be honest, I'm just surprised how smoothly this one is working. And let's see the last example of, well, this thing, which is actually a reactor. So here we have a height property, the brightness, as well as the scale. And lastly, there is also a position that we can adjust of this reactor and the plane that this is currently being positioned on. And it's basically just going like this. And a funny thing is that we can make it move really fast. And I also need to say that this is a pretty cool 3D model. It's nice seeing how Roblox is putting effort into these showcases. But I'm going to leave links for the demo plays and the dev forum post in the description. I highly recommend that you guys check it out because there is some few features that I haven't shown from here. But yeah, that is basically going to be every for today. So go check out my UGC items and again leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. But I hope everyone had a nice day and see you guys.